birds like now I'm sure you're hearing that it's very very loud in the morning like around 6 a.m. the roads in the province are um, usually so like that one <laughs> I'm actually at the back right now because in front it's even it's way worse it's way more worse it's the prevalence of karaoke like right now you can actually hear I don't know if you can hear it but it's it's um, disrupting me a little bit hey it's mirror beauty so first of all guys I just want to apologize in advance and to excuse myself for my background yeah I know it's messy and it's so it looks dirty but it is what it is this is how it looks like really here in the area where we cook and prepare food I mean there's table there and it's we where we eat and prepare food so yeah all these things are like extras like raincoats yeah these are raincoats in fruits living the province may be an appealing option for those seeking a quieter more relaxed way of life in the philippines but it's important to consider that there are also major drawbacks to living outside of the city while some people may enjoy the simplicity of life in the province others may struggle to adjust to the lack of modern amenities see so others may struggle to adjust to the lack okay so others may struggle to adjust to the lack of modern amenities and limited access to goods and services and also social life may be more limited so in today's video we will take a closer look of the cons of living in the province and explore some of the challenges that expats may face when relocating to a more rural area in the philippines so number one is limited job opportunities one of the biggest challenges of living in the province is the limited job opportunities especially with those of specialized skills in the provinces most jobs are related to agriculture fishing and forestry this may not be a problem for retirees or for those who are not seeking employment in the philippines but for expats or individuals who wants to work in the country the limited job opportunities can be a challenge to nothing at all this is because the majority of jobs in the provinces are not suitable with those specialized skills or qualifications but this may not be a problem for expats who work online and can work from anywhere with a strong internet connection in fact living in the philippines can be a great option for those who want to work online while enjoying a more peaceful and affordable lifestyle number two limited access to healthcare. living in the province can also have some drawbacks when it comes to healthcare. while some expats may enjoy the laid-back lifestyle and natural beauty of countryside others may find it challenging to adjust to the limited access to healthcare facilities and services because in the provinces there may be few hospitals clinics and medical professionals which could be problematic in the events of medical emergency even if there are hospitals and clinics in the area they may not offer the same level of care as those found in the city which could be particularly concerning for those with chronic illnesses or complex medical conditions additionally some medical treatments may not be available in the province requiring patients to travel to the city to access specialized medical care number three limited access to goods and services while some areas may have basic necessities like grocery stores and markets expats may find it challenging to find certain goods and services they are used to having access to in more urban areas this can include specialty foods imported goods and specific medical products in some cases expats may need to travel to nearby cities to access these goods which can be hassle and expensive number four limited access to modern amenities others may find it challenging to the lack of access of modern amenities such as um, high-speed internet shopping malls and international restaurants may be limited or non-existent in some areas expats who are used to modern conveniences may find it more difficult to adjust to the more basic 
way of life. You may have to give up some of the luxuries that you are accustomed to and learn to live without them. For example, expats who are used to high-speed internet may find that the internet connection in the province is slow and unreliable. This can be frustrating for those who depend on internet for their work or entertainment. And also expats who are used to shopping in large malls may find that the shopping options in the province are very limited. You may have to travel to nearby cities to find what you need. And also so if you enjoy dining out that much, you may find that there are few options of international cuisine in the province and you may have to learn to enjoy the local dishes. Overall, if you choose to live in the province, you should be prepared to adjust to a more basic way of life and be willing to travel to nearby cities to access the modern amenities that you are used to. It's important to keep an open mind and embrace the simplicity of life in the province rather than focusing on the things that may be lacking. Number five, limited social life. Living in the province can be isolating and expats who are used to a bustling social life may find it hard to adjust. Social activities may be limited and entertainment options may be scarce compared to living in a city. For example, there may be fewer movie theaters, bars, nightclubs, and other forms of entertainment. You may also find it harder to find people with the same interest, hobbies, or lifestyles. Younger people in particular may struggle with this aspect of living in the province because many younger people enjoy socializing, going out, and meeting new people. And they may find it challenging to make friends or form social connections in a small town or village. And also you may find that the social norms and values in the province are totally different from what you are used to in your home country. For example, people may have a more traditional views on topics like gender roles, family values, and religion. This can lead to a culture shock. Number 6. Noise Pollution One of the biggest sources of noise pollution in the province is the presence of animals such as roosters, birds, like now, I'm sure you're hearing that. It's very, very loud in the morning, like around 6 a.m and um, the noise of dogs as well. Roosters and dogs in particular. Because roosters crow all throughout the day, often starting as early as 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. And dogs, they are commonly kept as pets in many rural areas, but they can be so irritating and frustrating sometimes. They bark at any time of the day or night. And the noise can be heard from a distance which can really disrupt your sleep and can cause frustration. Because it's like they're like talking to each other when they're barking. One dog barks and all the dogs in the neighborhood barks. Another significant source of noise pollution in the province is the presence of tricycles and motorbikes, which are a common form of transportation in many rural areas. The roads in the province are um, usually so like that one <laughs> I'm actually at the back right now because in front it's even it's way worse it's way more worse the roads in the province are often narrower and vehicles tend to drive slower but the noise from these vehicles can be really disruptive especially if you live close to the road but here is like all houses are very close to the road. It's like there is no setback from the road. These vehicles have a very, very loud engines and can pass by homes at any time of the day or night, disturbing your peace of mind. Beyond these external sources of noise, another factor that can contribute to a noise environment is the proximity of houses to each other. In the province, houses are often built close to one another because one reason is the distribution of residential lots in provinces like here in my province um, they are very small portions of lots that you can just really build a small house and usually people will try to maximize the use of their land so it's like they will use every corner or every space that they have in their lot which means that neighbors can hear each other's conversation, movements, and activities. Children playing and people chatting outside of their homes. 
<laughs> can be a source of disturbance, especially in the early morning, like around 6 a.m. or like sleeping time around 10, 11 p.m. Finally, one of the most disruptive sources of noise pollution in the province is the prevalence of karaoke. Like right now, you can actually hear, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, it's um, disrupting me a little bit. Many Filipinos love to sing and will set up karaoke outside of their homes particularly during celebrations and holidays. While this can be a very fun activity of those involved, it can also be incredibly disruptive for those who live nearby. So in conclusion, while living in the province can offer a slower pace of life and break from the noise and pollution of the city, it is also important to be aware of the potential sources of noise pollution. But not everyone is bothered by these noises. Some people find the sounds of the nature or of the animals or of the people chatting or the um, children playing to be soothing and calming but for those who are sensitive to noise or have trouble sleeping like me it's important to consider these factors before deciding to move to the province number seven language barrier while english is one of the official languages here in the philippines and is widely spoken in urban areas the situation may be different in the province each province has its own local dialect. Like for example, here we have Ilocano. And many locals may not be as fluent in English as those living in the city. This actually can pose a significant challenge to you. Especially, of course, you're not familiar with the local dialect. Like Ilocano, Kapampangan, Bisaya, Kankanae, Ibanag. There's a lot it can make it challenging to communicate with locals, especially in the more rural areas where the majority of the population only speaks their local dialect. It can also create misunderstandings and miscommunications, which can cause frustration and difficulty in daily life. I've experienced that when I was in France. <laughs> so you may need to learn the local dialect to improve their communication skills and also your communication skills with them so you can connect better with the community. But of course, this may take a lot of time and effort to achieve this, especially if you don't have prior knowledge of the language. Living in the province can have its challenges for expats. While some enjoy the simplicity and slower pace of life, others may find it difficult to adjust to the lack of modern amenities, noise, and limited social life. It's challenging for some, but it's a unique experience that can be fulfilling for some. Ultimately, the decision to live in the province will depend on personal circumstances, priorities, and goals. And it's essential to carefully consider the cons before making the decision to live in the province. And that's pretty much about it. If you like this video, guys, and find it useful, like and subscribe would be much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!